Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of, the podcast, where we explore the struggles of life, the challenges of mental health and recovery, and the spaces between. We express our personal views on life here, and this podcast is not meant to replace medical advice or tell anyone the right way to live. This podcast is best used as a place of curiosity and questioning to accompany you on your journey. Be aware there is strong language. Here we go. That's an interesting start to our podcast, Jenny. Oh. Wait, are we recording? <laughs> Why would your intention even be to be all that someone else needs you to be from the start? Yeah, and it's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, but I just, I feel that like someone needs me and I can't be all that they need me to be. Yeah. So what, what does that happen? What happens then? Go right there. Okay. You so can't. You can't be all that they need you to be, and you recognize that. So I give what I can, and then that's that. Has that always been what you've done? No, no. What I've, did you do historically? Uh, I'm an awesome people pleaser. I'm an okay. A plus people pleaser. So, I would just keep going at the detriment to my own health, well-being, okay. safety. But when you would do this, and you're talking about, and that that thought went through her mind, oh my God, I can't be everything this person needs me to be. What feeling follows it? Oh, if I couldn't be all that they needed yeah. to be, oh, then it would be like, I'm not enough. I'm guilt. I would try really hard to be that person. I would put aside uh. a lots of stuff to try to be that person. But then mm-hmm. new grown up Jenny would be like, uh, well, I guess I'm not enough. Mm. Um, moving on. I mean, I might feel a little self-conscious about not being enough, but then also I also have a grown up understanding that I am not going to be everything to everyone they're just not for me so yeah yeah I, similar backstory you know uh mm-hmm. dread panic oh god how how do i make it all work how do i be everything this person needs me to be and get the shit i need to get done and then also be everything this other person over there needs me to be and then be everything the person at work needs me to be and then yeah right but i, I i've kind of been noticing lately i think or maybe my question is, I don't know if we're all living a version of this and maybe this is the challenge in life is to figure out what percentage feels right for us, right? So <clears throat> I've been complaining about not having time for myself lately, right? Actually, not just lately, for a while it seems. <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah, years, <laughs> ever, for the rest of my life. Um, so I, I took Fridays off at work. Like I rearranged my schedule. I did some things different. I had Fridays off. That was my day, my time. Um, I think it started off well. <laughs> and then like summer came and so the kids were out of school. People were home. Didn't necessarily exactly feel like my time. And then school started up and I was like, oh, this will be cool. And I think like maybe the first one was. And then somehow, and, and here we are like two or three months into school and I'm looking back and I'm frustrated, right, about my Fridays. Did you lose your Fridays? I, they haven't been mine. I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I worked this upcoming Friday. I've worked the last two Fridays. Not a ton, but a little, right? Uh, I can't remember the last Friday I actually, like, had a plan and did what I wanted to do. It's been doctor's appointments or dentists or kids stuff or running people where they need to go or banks or whatever, like... It's just become the default. Oh, this is the day that I catch all and do everything for everybody. And like, there's part of me that is really struggling here because I feel like I've cut out quite a bit of the bullshit, right? Uh, This has been like my mission over the last year or two, cut out some of this bullshit, make more time for me and my family. That's the goal, right? So here I am, I'm doing some of that. that. That's taking care of my family, but there's still a frustration in me, right? And it's like, My question comes down to, okay, well, if I'm honoring my body with that frustration, like we talked about, right, it's saying I need to establish time just for me where I can, without guilt, tell my kids no. When my nine-year-old comes and says, you want to hang out or talk, I'm allowed to say, no, this is mine. You can't, right? I need some of mine. And then when my my other kids, older kids want more from me or want me to do something that needs to be done for them or whatever, like, yes, I can help you with that, but not 
during this period of time. I'm not just going to give this away to help you. You're going to have to wait an extra two weeks until there's a chance on another day or whatever, right? So what I'm looking at in myself is, am I still doing the people pleasing if I'm still getting the frustration, right? Yes, not to the same degree. Maybe the work isn't getting the people pleasing Jason out of me, but here I am still in another incarnation trying to figure out where is the acceptable amount of that's your fucking problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and like, I'm, I'm getting better at it. And, and with the older ones, it's getting a little simpler because like, hey, you're, you're finally 18 now. Yay. And I can just tell you that a lot of times when you want me to do shit for you. Like, I can't. You're 18. That's yours. Would it help if when somebody asked of you on your day off to do something, you said, no, I can't because use the word because this is my day and it keeps me sane. Well, uh, maybe that's the message I need to tell myself. I, I, it's not what I'm learning for Jason's body is while there is a piece of how will people look at me when I say this, uh, and how will they judge me? I really want to get as far away from that as possible. Cause like, it doesn't matter what, how people judge me. People can judge me. I need to get more comfortable with that and just being me. Right. It doesn't matter. So I, I'm not so much worried about the delivery of it. It's more just coming to terms with it. I, I think what I'm recognizing is mm-hmm. there. I thought I was healed from people pleasing. And what I got healed was like a percentage of how much I people please and how often and how willing I'll be to. Right. So what I did was I, I, I brought my boundaries. I got them. I got them more established and maybe I pumped them up a little bit, but I didn't just cure myself of people pleasing. And I guess what I'm asking here or, or trying to allude to is like, maybe this isn't something where some people struggle with people pleasing. Maybe this is the challenge that every human is on to figure out what level for me feels right of doing for others versus doing for me. Maybe that's what we're all up against. Like what level feels right? And there's all these judgments about people from the outside will say, well, you should be doing for others more and not be so selfish, but they're all the people that want shit from you too. Right? Like, I don't know, but, but is that what we're really doing? Are we all trying to find that comfy place of like where we're allowed to say no? Yeah. Or what, I guess uh, immediately I think, well, what do we need mean by like people, please? Like who are the people? So if the people are my wife and my kids and my immediate family, like I feel a little bit of an obligation to them. Like there's some level of like right. being a partner in a committed relationship means I got to give a little and being a parent and interacting with my kids means I got to give a little, you know, I don't just get to do what the fuck I want all the time. Uh, getting back to our human connection piece, mm. like that part of intimacy right. and human right. connection also involves vulnerability and sacrifice and those kind of things too, where at least for me, historically, uh, the people pleasing has been so and so wants me to come help a move. So and so has a project that they're working on at their house, and I start giving up, you know, my weekends and things that I need to take care of at my own house or with my own family, in place of you know helping other friends or or that stuff, and not having a good uh, boundary there for what I can and can't do. Um. But I, funny enough, my wife and I were just talking about this last night of I tend to struggle with I will go all one way of like I'm going to be like totally in on like working on the marriage and being a great partner and being a great dad and being a, around the house and doing all that stuff. And I can usually maintain that for a couple weeks, two weeks, you know, maybe mm-hmm. th- maybe three. And then I'm like, well, fuck, I am not happy. <laughs> like I need some level of like I just want to watch sports or I want to go do something out in the woods or I want to go with my friends out to a show or and it can be my wife too but I just right. I want to go out and do something I like to go out I like to do you know entertaining things I need to have some experience like I can't just fucking be home committed there all the time but then I'll swing all the other way like well, now I'm just hanging out with my friends and watching sports. <laughs> you know, I like I go back and forth between wanting to do what I want to do all the time and wanting to do what I think my family needs me to do all the time and trying to figure out that middle place of like what's enough time for me. Well, and I and I think the the at least my problem has been and I need to stop assuming everybody else is thinking and dealing with the same shit I am, but it's been coming from the place of like 
I deserve to have these things that I need for me, which I, I believe, right? I deserve to have time for myself. I deserve to have the love and affection that I'm looking for and shown the way that I'm looking for. I do. But I've just been so angry and frustrated and hollering that I'm not getting it that I was never able to take steps towards getting it. Hmm. It's just been like, oh, well, y'all ain't giving it to me. Well, that might be true, but honestly, I don't even know how to give it to me because I've never stopped and thought about it. So right. I couldn't tell you if you asked. And if you did ask me, I'd be like, I don't fucking know. So like my real frustration when I'm looking at it now, looking back, I'm like, what I'm really angry about in that moment is I'm angry that I can't just get what my needs are. And I don't know how to put in the work to get to a place where I can, whether that's the work of teaching you, the work of leaving you and finding a person who can or who more aligns with me. Like my anger is really the frustration of I just don't know how the fuck to get my needs met. Hmm. And I think the conditions are constantly changing. There's no set formula. There's no set formula between people and there's no set formula between Billy this week, Billy next week, Billy three weeks from now. Truth. And so I feel like Every day you have to reevaluate how much sports and hangout time versus how much family time. Yeah, we're not built for that. <laughs> I, well, I know, I know. You're so right. Though. Um. So, like, I know, like, so yeah, when sports I, are on when sports are on. You don't get to pick. You know, <laughs> yeah. the fucking football game's on at one. That's right, you right. know, that's it's already chosen. <laughs> well, and we just don't teach people that that like. You are different from day to day, depending on how you feel, how much sleep you got, like what's on your mind, what troubles are going on in your peripheral world of connections, like all of that impacts how much we have left. What if you have six other people in your house and your nervous system also relies on the weeks those six people had? Well, that or just well, me and fuck? my wife are like <laughs> completely different in that she needs like downtime like she just she wants to be Same. around the house and not really have any sort of yes. demands or any kind yes. of anything and just hang out oh and just God. chill and i'm like i do that and i'm sitting around i'm fucking tapping you know the chair and i'm like all right and we did that for last weekend and i'm like and i hate to say this because it's not a waste but in my head i'm like this is such a waste <laughs> of a fucking weekend like i have so many things oh. i could be doing it's just that's not me you know what i mean like it's not me to just be like chill and and do nothing so I, and i don't know this right i don't know this i was driving here this morning and i feel like this is my constant refrain in my head is like i want to fucking reclaim my weekends <laughs> like, <laughs> i want my weekends to be full of nothing yeah lots of empty space right but my goal in that is to create the space to get into something together mm. you know right. what i mean like that's my goal it's kind of like the idea of everybody i feel like people are all out here bitching about the cold and i'm like i am loving the cold right because i get opportunities to get warm i get to bundle up in blankets i get to put on mm. coats i get to put on robes hoodies like i'm loving all the ways i'm getting warm right and that's what i want for my weekend i want all this space so i can love all the things i get into Right. Like, oh, we're just sitting here and we're both getting kind of bored. And I'll, I'll remember that we wanted to get that wood chopped up in the backyard. Let's go play around with that. Like and I don't know if that's the same case for Jen. Right. I, I don't know. But I, I need the space to be there first a little while to do the nothing to then realize what my body's calling me for. Hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, she says she likes to do nothing until it feels gross and then she knows she's had enough of it <laughs> yes that is a wonderful description i fucking love that i'm stealing that jen definitely yes i want to do nothing until it feels fucking disgusting and then i'll know it's time to do something else yeah i want my body to be the motivation not the world telling me what's next that's what yeah. i want i yeah. want to want to so do that's something what she does. <laughs> yeah actually part of me like um, cutting down how much I could come to the recording was I needed to put space in my calendar. Like I just had, I had like every weekend full and it was making me crazy. Mm -hmm. And I just, I needed to like put more space in my calendar. I'd still be busy, but it like, it would be something that came up that day. Like I need to, I needed yeah, well, spontaneity, I guess you would say. Driving here to our lovely recording studio in mm -hmm. my mom's house. <laughs> um, I was thinking, 
I haven't been over here to see my mom, but one time since soccer season started. Because once you put another fucking thing in my weekend, it's too much, right? I spent four hours at the fucking soccer field for two games yesterday. It's like, I'm exhausted after that fucking time at the soccer field. Man, it's so weird. Like, I am bad with spawn. So, Jen, and this is where her and I conflict a lot. It's like, I'm bad with spontaneity. Like, I'm, if... If I have, like, if there's not something scheduled, then I'm almost overwhelmed by what I could possibly be doing. (laughs) So I almost end up doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like that old, you know, when the wife and kids go away, I end up doing nothing but sitting at home watching TV because I'm like, well, I don't know what to do now. I got this freedom. Like, I got to schedule shit for myself. So I don't know if that's a condition or a personality trait. But (laughs) In in my mind, that requires the same thing that, that Jenny's anger needs Mm. it needs you to watch it Mm. what's it like with this flood of things to do and not being able to pick and having a hard time connecting to my person inside who knows who wants to and what he wants you know like i I know i like like hikes and i like going out in nature and i like doing stuff like that but if i don't schedule it in i won't fucking do it Mm. i just i won't like hey why don't we just Go take a hike. Like that, I, well, like you spontaneously were spontaneously come up. Yeah, you, you were programmed to find the things that are important to you, not very important to take care of. Yeah, uh, you well, know what and I mean. It's always like, felt like what do they call that? Like the the squeaky wheel kind of thing idea. Right. It's like always looking for the squeaky wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, always mm-hmm. focused on what needs attention and trying to do that. In in my mind, and look, Billy, I could be 100% fucking wrong on this one. I, I own it. I have no clue. This is me expounding what my life is like and my feelings to the world, and I get it. That can be, we could just be two different, weird, biologically different people, and I don't know. But my thing is, I think that's you haven't sat still long enough to feel gross <laughs> to know what you want. Yeah. That's my idea. It's just that for you, you don't have the interest in it. Or I don't ever make my own well-being the squeaky wheel. You know what I mean? The squeaky wheel is always everything out here. It's never like me and what, you know, because I'll squeaky wheel until I'm miserable, you know, (laughs) and and be miserable getting all this shit done. And where's the loving parent coming in at the back end of that to say, man, it's really fucking hard to not know what you want to do or to have so many interests that it's hard to pick from. Yeah. You know, maybe if we slowed down and took a walk in the woods, it would help us clear our mind and we could think through what we really want to do most yeah or when i do things for myself it tends to start to feel selfish you know i get that sometimes too Mm -hmm. why do you think my fridays ain't mine no more (laughs) (laughs) because it started to not feel good when people were asking me for shit what is this like productivity part of our brain like productivity and shame like yeah well i just i think back to the jujitsu when i was doing jujitsu and it was all of a sudden it's like now I'm taking this time away from this and that. And mm-hmm. This is not my like, and it's kind of fun, but you know, it's taken away you from. Stop that. Yeah. Sad, yeah. It, it and was, like, I enjoyed it. You. Yeah. Even when you broke your finger. You well, were there happy was with a, it. and there was a more practical reason behind that, too. I was getting injured quite a bit. And I'm like, I'm fucking almost 50. Like, mm-hmm. I can't be walking around with broke fingers and hurt knees and my neck <laughs> sore like it that. was in a fight club. Kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't like that. And I might have been able to adjust and figure something out with that, but it was that on top of the time commitment that was just like, oh, is this really, you know, it's something I really like, but is it necessary and is it worth what I'm giving up? Mm-hmm. So I valued it as no. Uh, anyway, I wanted to interject earlier, the middle, middle way, like we always, the Buddhist principle, middle way. And it's just um, you having to cut down on your extracurricular exercise activity, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know. I think about it in the middle way filter again. Like you still have sports and friends and social time, but maybe not all the social time. I had to cut down too because I was doing that um, Phoenix class, the Phoenix exercise mm-hmm. class, and I had to cut that out too because, yeah, I was spending too much time on me instead of my other facets of life, like taking care of my family and, uh, you know, homemaking, there's a, I have a lot of fronts there, but. Well, uh, and I've felt that, I mean, sometimes about even like recovery and meetings and stuff like that, like trying to find a balance there. Like I can't, I mean, yeah, would I do better going to three meetings a week? Maybe, you know, probably. But what am I giving up? 
you know, there's like trying to find a balance of how much self-help is too much self-help. <laughs> I don't know. This is interesting. Cause like when you mm. just said the thing about you had to give up the Phoenix one because it was too much. And my first initial thought, um, is by what gauge, by what measurement, like who's, judgment are you counting on that it was too much time for you versus family time because i would definitely be willing to argue i don't know that i've met a human that defaults to being too much of their own time i think we're all kind of programmed <laughs> to do too much of other people's shit mm. by default so i'm like okay are you using the faulty barometer that you were programmed with to measure if it was too much time because then i heard billy say something similar and i'm like well whose judgment are we counting on for this because that's why i gave up my fucking fridays that i am definitely entitled to mm -hmm. because of my guilt i shouldn't trust that that's not good well, <laughs> that's you not know what? accurate i'll tell you what played into it was i was like i like my home to run in a certain way and it wasn't running that way and it so and that that wasn't an outside that was i was unhappy well and and that's yeah yeah that's what i thought i'm sorry mm. did i cut you off mm, I, don't, oh. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> i think i did go ahead <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought oh, go sorry. you go <laughs> i gotta get better at that um no i lost mine so I was, yeah, I was unhappy with the balance of things. It wasn't an outsider. I mean, and I guess we could say like in a broad way that we're all a product of outside, you know, indoctrination, you know, but. Right, right. But I mean, I I thought I was doing too much of my self-help stuff and I needed to, to be content. I wanted to do more for the family. I think my initial thought was the only way you could really gauge it would be to your own level of happiness the other way, right? Like, oh, well, I adjusted, but now I'm not feeling happy with the results or what I'm missing out on. But I feel like that's guilt, which is what I was just talking about, which I can't necessarily trust. Guilt is like a double check warning sign, not necessarily a you're doing it wrong warning sign when you have a faulty programmed guilt. Our guilt was programmed to default to taking care of others' feelings over our own. You know, that's that's like our programming. And I'm not saying that that's good or bad or indifferent. Like, I don't think it leads me to living a life that gives me enough resources to actually give people the best of me. But it, it's the programming we got. But, like, how do you... It's almost like I need to double... Uh, guilt tells me I need to double check what I'm thinking or doing... But maybe I need to look at it from like as if my friend was doing it with their kid or my friend was doing it with their spouse or something. You know what I mean? And what would I tell them? Because I feel like when we just go back and go along with guilt, we're, we're just following into the same thing that's held us in this fucking pattern the whole way, time we've been here. You know? Oh, well, I'm going to give myself more time because that's what I need. Oh, I feel guilty now. Let me go back and give more time to my family. Oh, this isn't working again. It's frustrating me. I'm going to give myself more time. Oh, I feel guilty again. I'm going to go... It's going to be waffling back and forth our whole life. But that's what we said earlier is the case, that we're not the same person every day. Yeah, I just don't know that we're setting ourselves up for a successful plan there when we're just going by the whims of what's going on inside and not addressing is that belief actually a very good belief? Like, what am I entitled to? What would I tell okay. Billy or Jenny that they were allowed to ask for in their family life? And I would think is a reasonable amount for them. And mine is usually lower for me. <laughs> my expectation of myself is that I'm supposed to do all these things for my kids. But if you guys came to me with that same problem, I would say, eh, I think reasonably you've done your portion already. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like and you hold yourself to a higher right, standard. Right. So I think maybe standard. guilt should be the thing that triggers, oh, let me reevaluate this situation. But from an outside perspective to see what it is, because guilt's going to come from our programming not necessarily when it needs to be there or is helpful. I really appreciate that. So guilt is the flag. When the feeling is guilt, mm, that's the double check flag. That's I really in appreciate my mind, that. Yeah. Mm. But it but it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong because I'm trying to change the way I think and feel. Yeah. <laughs> that's my goal, right? So I need to really be looking at it. So if you can identify it as guilt versus another feeling which is like mm, unhappy or something, like if you can identify it specifically as guilt, that's the flag. In my mind, yeah, in my mind. 
that is working in my mind too. So it's kind of like so the idea. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> two of us agree. Sure. In my mind, it's like if you if your parents gave you ice cream every night for dinner, right? And that's all you ever got. And then you hit 25 years old and you go to therapy and they're like, man, maybe you should try some broccoli and carrots and like, you know, chicken and things that are positive for you. And then you go to eat it and it feels and tastes terrible. Well, duh. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Right. Sometimes when you're programmed with the bad information, we got to reprogram, not necessarily. And most transitions are painful. Yeah. Well, and that was something I think I thought of earlier, Billy, too, when you were talking about um, the anger piece was the idea that um, when I had read that one book, Good Inside, she talks about we didn't get taught or modeled or practiced with that learning is hard. Mm. The process of learning is hard, right? right? That's what it is. It, it's frustrating. It annoys you. It's And like when I can tell myself that in those moments of frustration with the inanimate objects, like, ah, phew, learning is tough. The next thing that happens for me is I think, I need to tend to me while I'm going through this tough time. <laughs> right. And it, and it keeps me from going outward with the anger. It's, oh, I'm going to come back in and tend to the guy who's having the hard time learning. Hmm. You know? Well, I, I guess I got stuck on something that you said where I'm like, oh, I don't think that's me at all. Like you said, we tend to want to serve the needs of others or something like that. Our default is to want to. I think our default is to make sure is to take care of other people's feelings above our own. Yeah. That's what our parents I just thought, us. oh, I'm doing that wrong for sure. Why? I don't think I put that sounds very necessarily difficult. other people's feelings ahead of my own. I think I tend to be more selfish in that area. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> like, I'm like, do I look at the needs of my kids and family? I mean, I think I what I do is I put them into boxes and think, all right, this is your role as kid. This is what you're supposed to be doing. But a lot of that's really mm -hmm. self-serving, hmm. you know. If you pull out, maybe all of it's self-serving. Even even the people pleasing is just to like self-serve. So I feel yeah. better. Oh yeah. yeah well, that's is. and that's what I thought with that too. Like people pleasing isn't for them. It's so that I feel okay about me. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know? We've been programmed. In my mind, I guess what I'm saying is we've been programmed to default. Our parents made their feelings more important than ours. We went to them with our feelings and they shamed us and angered with us and punished us into we had to protect how they looked, how they felt. That was the more important piece. Um, so it's I, I guess, yeah, we can grow up to be somewhat of the perpetrators of that. I definitely did some of that okay. with my parenting and stuff. It was uh, I had a therapist explain it to me that like my father wanted what he wanted and thought he was entitled to it just because he wanted it that way basically mm -hmm. and, and it was like a weird way to say it but I, it i was like yeah that resonates i feel like because i have a feeling and i want a thing a certain way it's supposed to be which isn't necessarily terrible right it's fine if i'm working towards creating that life for myself but when i'm just expecting others around me to to cater and meet all those demands that can be a lot for them um well, and it's almost like the, the problem there isn't necessarily the want or the desire. It's how we go about getting it. You know what I mean? Am I setting expectations that I think everybody's supposed to do that? And then when they don't, I get angry and resentful that they don't. Definitely. Or is it that I have that expectation and I can express that to the people right. around me and let them know, hey, this is what I want. This is my expectation. This is what I'm going for. Hopefully you're going to help me get there. And, <laughs> like, and then at some level being willing to tolerate the pain of not being there anymore if they can't. Right. You know, and I think that's where I've never been before. I've mm. never, I'm like, nope, I'll just stay. I love this person, you know? Yeah. So, okay. I, I want to go back though. There was this twisted piece in me and I don't know if this is in you and this is kind of where we're all self-discovering how different <laughs> humans are. So I love it. Um, in me, yes, there was this like entitlement and, and self-righteousness around all that and anger that y'all should be doing the things my way and that's the best and all those, right? I had all that. But there was also this twisted sense of obligation that I was supposed to be showing up in ways that looked a certain way and I felt a ton of fucking shame that I never could. I was never able to. And I don't, again, I don't know if you had this, Billy, but it was like, oh, fathers are supposed to be this for their kids. And then I would be the opposite and the yelling, screaming maniac or whatever. And like, I'd hate myself. And so it was like, 
I had all this obligation that I was responsible for all these different things that I was supposed to be doing in the world and never felt like I had anywhere near enough resources to even get fucking started. So I just lived in this constant shame of all that, right? And it, it didn't look like it on the outside necessarily that I was trying to please everybody around me, but that feeling of shame and, and crushing, uh, I will never, ever be enough for these people existed the whole time. And I don't know if that. Yeah, so it does. And I, it's funny. We talked about, I heard something yesterday, interestingly enough, uh, back to like early childhood stuff and these storylines and these narratives that get built into us in our subconscious, you know, when we're growing up and like we have these expectations on what we think love is and what love looks like. And, you know, I used to joke with Jen, I realized this recently, like if you go to a lot of recovery meetings, you know, you'll see people, oh, I love you so much. And they give you a hug. And for a long time, I was like, I'm not saying I love you back to this motherfucker. Like, I don't love this person like that, like that, because to me, that had a very specific uh, criteria of expectations. Mm -hmm. And I told Jen, you know, just recently, I said, if people knew the level of expectations that I put on them when they tell me that they love me, they would stop fucking saying that <laughs> because, you know what I mean? Like in my mind, if I tell you that I love you, that carries a very, like there's a fucking laundry list of shit that I'm saying that I'm now right. committed to doing. Right. And then of course I fall short, yeah. you know, so whatever. But one of them recently, I heard someone talk about that uh, condition of like, if you're in a marriage and with your spouse, like all of a sudden you're not supposed to find other people attractive or whatever. Right. And like having that built in, I guess, from some parenting modeling or whatever it was in my parents that put that idea there. I don't know where that idea got put there, but that's just an idea that's there. And then real like seeing someone who you think, oh, those people are really attractive or I'm sexually excited by that person and then feel like, well, I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> like Something's right. wrong with me or I must not love this person because I feel this, like, yeah. yeah so there's all that conflicting shit that we build these storylines yes. into ourselves and we hold them, hold ourselves to some standard. That's some subconscious bullshit that we right. never really agreed to in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, all shit our parents were unable to feel and tolerate themselves and they put on us and now we think we're... Sp yeah, yeah. So in my mind, even though my, my external actions didn't necessarily look like it was always about everybody else first, there was a torture going on in my head around me not living up to that expectation and about getting and feeling better required being able to live up to that <laughs> expectation, right? right? So like in my mind, that was still always the narrative is... I have to find a way to be all these things to all these people if I ever even want to get close to thinking I'm enough of a human. Mm. And I guess that feeling just feels the same whether I was acting on it or not. I guess it I, does mm. that feel the same for you? More of an external people pleaser? Yeah, I would say um, a lot of my self-worth was external. So how 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 I fulfilled what I thought you wanted from me was how I felt about myself. And uh, that even carried through. So I'm coming up on 11 years of recovery, but I would say the self-worth journey really took a turn these past like two years. Like I was still playing, healing, people-pleasing shit. And um, Might be the recovery sort of podcast, just saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not going to take any credit or anything. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, actually, I, I, I think it, the pandemic being home and having time to reflect mm. i think that uh helped i mean uh, we started like five months before that i'm just saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I, it's I know. tough call my yeah. relationship with uh, recovery sort of but no and, and this is part of it too because we do these deep dive discussions on the show and outside the show like yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely um so thank you guys <laughs> thank I you guys and billy we'll i love you yeah. <laughs> um so uh but yeah the self-worth journey like it started to be like well you know, what, what do, what do I want for me? Not like what other people are saying. And that was the thing too, is my confused things about what I thought you wanted from me and just, just being me is enough. And then, yeah, like if I can't be what I think you want, the more recent example we were talking about just before we started recording was like, I, this is what I have to give, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry if I can't be more, you know, like, 
not even I'm sorry, like like in a guilty way, like like I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, you and know? the first ideas I learned about that, I think were in recovery of like being able to say no if something was too much. Like that seemed impossible. Like early on, I was like, oh, if anybody asks me to do anything, I'm supposed to do it. You know what I mean? Like just whatever the fuck it is, you right. need help moving, you need me to cut your grass, you need me to, like I'll figure it out and try to do it so that you like me. You need me to fly to South America? Right. And <laughs> sure. justifying it, like I'm being helpful, I'm, I'm being productive, like all that shit. And then, you know, getting to a place where just being like, no, I can't. That's too much. I can't do that. I'm sorry. Even, yeah. <laughs> right. Did you know what a boundary was before recovery? I did not. Boundary. Did not know what that terminology or concept was. Well, yes. not just being able to say no, but then not actually still feeling guilty about saying no. Like first mm -hmm. it was saying no and just feeling guilty about yeah. it. Like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. And then just being like, no, this is a healthy thing for me to do. Hey, like, that sounds just like what we were talking about earlier, sitting yeah. with the guilt instead of reacting to it, right. right? Like understanding that the guilt isn't actually pointing us at the right thing in that moment. Right. Yeah. And it won't kill you. Yeah. But nowadays, I'm, I, you know, especially like in my marriage and parenting and all that stuff, I'm like reevaluating all those roles and all those preconceived like ideas that I had and being like, ah. looking at, I guess one of the things I've heard recently is like, look at, uh, like people that model those things in your life that you admire and maybe looking, you know, to those people or for direction or advice. Like, you know, who are people that have like what you would consider a good, healthy marriage and then maybe trying to focus more like modeling towards that instead of whatever preconceived ideas you think about what marriage is supposed to be. I don't know those people and I definitely ain't around them enough in their personal so That's what I said to, to really Jen know. too. I said, I don't know any of those people. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not around them enough in day-to-day -day life to know what they live like. Like I can know I what they are. If you set the meeting. intention though, you could find them. Maybe. Yeah, probably. I've been looking or, for a mentor for a long fucking time. Jen. I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, and you know, even with parenting was the same, same way. Like I had all these preconceived ideas and early on in raising my kids, you know, it was this like authoritarian, I'm going to build these individuals that are these, you know, unique, autonomous, independent entities that whatever. And then like, I think what opened me up to changing that was sending them to that weird school, you know, the hippie school where. They would say that similar to what you said about learning, like they teach kids, oh, yeah, learning's hard. Like you're going to have failures and you're going to have challenges yeah. and you're going to fall short and like teaching them like, oh, all that's completely healthy. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you're going to fail at stuff. That's fine. I never got that messaging growing up. No. You know what I mean? It was like failure. Pah, you piece of shit. Yeah, just don't do that shit. Right. <laughs> don't quit. even start. That. Yeah, don't even try. If that looks hard, don't do hard stuff. Yeah. Like you might not be Crazy. able to make it, you know, and and. As they got that experience being like, wow, like maybe just trying to like love my kids and let them be who the fuck they are and they'll turn out how they're going to turn out instead of how I think they should turn out. Like it's maybe so that's funny. a thing. <laughs> and, and I think we've said it on here a bunch of different weeks, but I keep going back to it. Like I have this unreasonable fear that my kids will not be enough or will show up in a world and it will be callous to them and it, it'll hurt them. And so I try to prep them for that by making them like harder. Right. And like at this point in my life, looking back, what I wish I'd have done is made myself the soft, gentle landing spot for when yeah. the world was Yeah, or hard. just being like, you know you what? Know? Maybe I'll just take care of them their whole fucking life. Yeah. And that's okay, too. Instead I don't of know. toughening them up, I could have been right. a gentle spot. They could have landed at the end of that. And, and not only that, but I let that fear move, move me into action of I got to get it out of them. Well, I and I can get see, I get crazy looks from people at work when I'm like, my, my kids just live with me. Like they're both graduated school. Neither mm -hmm. of them have job. Well, Sophie did just get a part-time job, cool. but neither of them had jobs and they're just doing some shit and figuring it out. And I'm like, mom, they'll, eventually hey. they'll come around and figure some shit out or not. They'll just live with us our whole life. I, I'm okay with either. <laughs> I, I think the circumstances <laughs> were, I mean, I love that you do that with your family. I love that. I think the circumstances we live in today in 2023, we're lucky that we can do that. Previous generations, or you think about farming generations, is you needed those able-bodied farmers for the village to survive. So now, like, we're among the first emerging generations where you don't need able-bodied children for survival. Um, so, you know, this is kind of new. Yeah. <laughs> that we're allowed to do this, you know.
But some of that stuff, and I guess I started that tangent getting sort of back to where you started, is like, I don't always know what I need. Like, I have a preconceived notion about what I'm supposed to be as my role as employee and father and husband and all these things. And when I'm focusing all my energy on just fulfilling these roles and not paying attention to, like, what feels right or what is... what you know, what works, you know, what works in this situation because, you know, being more, uh, just open-minded and authentic with my family about being like, I don't like this. You know, you guys like to do this. I don't like it. Why don't you guys go do that? You know, instead of forcing myself to spend family time doing shit I don't want to do and being resentful about it. Well, and, I, and I think that's part of the really big challenge and probably why so many people who um, practice meditation or move towards a practice of meditation find it so amazing, in my mind, is that the pace we live at, not only externally, trying to keep up with all the demands of life, but this survival nervous system that amps up our sympathetic response puts us in this frenzy in our head this story about all the shit we need to get done and we can't forget it so we got to keep going over the list and this that and the other and the past failures and we don't want that to happen again and that keeps everything at such a pace that it's hard to even like you said step back and be like what the fuck do i want and while i'm in the fulfilling of all these obligations in my roles is, is that being met well? Is it being received the way I'm sending it? Like, I'm not even checking in for any of that shit because everything's just go, 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 get it all done. Knock it out. Make sure it's finished, you know, so you can have some chill time or something. And uh, it's just a lot, man. So, yeah, yeah, I think the meditation and the slowing it all down. And, like, that's the biggest gift I've been trying to give myself in these moments of frustration in my life or when things aren't feeling so hot for me. Let me slow the fuck down first. That's the first thing I need to give myself, the gift of not having to rush around because that doesn't feel good, right? Somebody else was talking recently. Um, I think somebody was telling me about a podcast they heard, whatever. It's peripheral information <laughs> that came my direction, but it was like the guy said, hey, I wanted to embark on this life of change and self-growth and self-development, and I knew that was going to take some of my time. So what did I have to make time for in my life? What did I want to give up? Where's the space I needed to create to have that kind of time to do that for myself? And he's like, and the space I chose to take was anger. I'm not going to waste time being angry anymore. If that's where I'm at, I'm going to move on and do something else. And like just these different ideas and concepts about like the ways we can gift ourselves, not being frustrated, not being angry. Like we're allowed to give ourselves whatever it takes to not feel that fucking awful feeling. Because that is a terrible fucking feeling. You know, we can take care of us in that in that moment. And it's just, it will change your fucking life. <laughs> Slow it down. Slow it all down. You made me think, I, I got to go back to this just because it entertained me. And so y'all are stuck hearing it because, you know, we have a podcast and that's what I do. <laughs> um, you were talking about the lack of boundaries early in recovery. And I was picturing having like three months into recovery and I get a new sponsee brother and we're having a bromance kicking it off. Right. And then he's like, Hey, look, I need you in, um, in six months, I'm going to need you to fly to South America for three weeks and take care of some business dealings for my family. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I can picture me like hunting down scientific equipment on Amazon and spending late <laughs> nights in my basement, trying to discover a way to clone myself so that I didn't also displease my boss by having to leave for three <laughs> weeks. You know what I mean? Like right. that craziness of like, I will meet all the demands somehow. Right. That's just insane. Yeah. Oh, that's that how is. I used to live too. Like before, like, so like in my twenties drinking, like I, I would drive like two and a half hours to spend whatever an hour with someone. And then, mm-hmm. you know, and like, have you found that listening to the recovery sort of podcast has helped you in your day-to-day journey please share the message of compassion and well-being with the loved ones in your life connect with us more at recovery facebook instagram threads youtube and other social media spaces and have a great week